Um, no, I mean, for me, I, you know, the thing that gets me excited is as you do more episodes, you get to expand the world and expand the characters. So we get more time with, you know, uh, Mayfair and Patterson and Reed and Zapata and uh, get to fill out the world in a really interesting way, I think. had released the puzzle and no one has solved it yet. So I was wondering if eventually later down in the season will yeah. you have more puzzles for the audience to try to figure out and will that lead to Easter eggs, especially for these characters? For sure. Well, you know, we did a thing with the titles that like people solved immediately, which was really, really fun, or some people have solved immediately. There's hidden messages in the titles for every episode that if you put together for the first 10 episodes uh, is kind of has like a little encoded secret message about the show. So we, we do a ton of stuff like that and we're going to change up how we do that for the from episode 11 to 22 because people solved the first ones way too quick. I was, I was, I was, I was really, really impressed with that. So, um, but you know, we work with this guy named David Kwong who's a New York Times uh, puzzler and, uh, and a magician and uh, you know, he, we, we kind of it's a it's a great team thing where we're like well here's what we need in the show and we kind of this is the tattoo and then we talk about it and and we add and or subtract some things and so yeah no it's it's uh he's really amazing so the puzzles on the show all work and um and what's fun is i've tried to release a few of them early so that people can kind of try to solve them before but they would take like patterson's really smart it takes a long time to solve these sometimes so it's uh um yeah i love the puzzles on the show How did finally know the DNA test match, so we know yeah. who she is. So is the rest of the season kind of going into the, the whys of what happened to her and all that? Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, the, the thing about Taylor is, you know, she was, what she kind of says in episode five, pardon me, is, um, you know, she was only Taylor for five years. So it's only part of the puzzle what happened to her and how she got to where she is is still a giant mystery. And so, um, so yeah, no, there's still a lot of mystery to, to iron out. But, yeah, no, I think, I think what's great is, you know, it's the emotional complexity of what that means for Weller and her is something that's, like, really exciting and we play through the entire rest of the season. How difficult is it to chart, um, like... You have a major mystery at the center of your show, and you yeah. just got picked up for additional episodes. Are you constantly fighting, like, bringing closure to that mystery? Too no, soon? because I, I was a little arrogant, and I designed the show to go a while. So, um, uh, so like, if we had gotten, if we had only done 13, it would have been really not that exciting for fans, to be honest, because there would have been no resolution. Uh, in fact, 13 is, is anyway. But, um, uh, uh, no, we know, like, I know what all of the you know, uh, tentpole episodes are for the first couple seasons. And so, like, I know what 22 is already. And um, uh, so it's, it's you know, it's... Uh, and, and episode 10, which is the last episode of the, the first half of the season, it's our mid-season finale, has a, like, is a huge twist on the show that is, uh, that propels kind of a new energy into the back half of the season. Ton coming up. That's that's what I'm so excited about episode four. To be honest, it's because we start to really get involved with we you know we get to know Patterson a lot more. We get to know Zapata a lot more. Uh, and um, no, there's some really there's some great stuff coming up with the other characters. I mean, you know, we're I, I'm exceptionally lucky for a lot of reasons, but first and foremost, like the the cast is so good. Like the number one, like the top seven actors on our show that we get to have every week could all really be the leads in their own TV show. And so we're really trying to give them as much to do as possible. Um, uh, and it also gets Sullivan and Jamie like half a second off before. Uh, uh, but yeah, no, they're, it's, there's, and for me, that's, I watch TV because of characters, you know, like I get deeply involved in the characters and, uh, and I love them all kind of equally. So to give them a little more screen time is fantastic. I didn't know from the beginning, but the second I met her, like, there could never be any other Jane. Like, it was, I was, yeah, it was her or, or like, or I was going to be just terribly disappointed. And she kind of felt the same way. So it was, like, one of those really exciting meetings when we met where we were like, oh, okay, this is going to be, this is going to be great. And can you talk a little bit more about the origins of the show? Where did you get the idea and, like, the opening scene? Sure, I mean, you know, for me, it's, it's not that great a story because, like, I've just been thinking about... You know, like I love puzzles. I love mysteries. This, this is the kind of show I would get really excited about. Like anytime there's like, and there's they they typically don't do well. So I, you were always like, like what was the last one with? Um, oh man, uh, 
the guy from ER. Do you guys remember that one? Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, yeah. It was like they like it was a treasure map show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, it did not last. It did not. But like I watched every episode, even though that show was like, you know, honestly, not very good. It was not very good. But like these are my type of shows. And so I've been trying to figure out how to do one, but they're really hard to do because like, you know, you have you ideally when you build a TV show, you should have an idea for like, hopefully it goes 100 episodes. Right. And so um, so it took a while to slowly piece that together. And then the opening just kind of came to me one morning. Like, just like, I was just lying in bed and it just kind of like, I, I, I had lived next to Times Square when there was a bomb scare and so I'd seen it emptied out and it was always such an amazing image. And, um, and then I just thought, I was like, oh, I wonder if there was, instead of a bomb in the bag, if it was a person and, and then that just kind of, and then I was like, oh, what if they had like a, a map on their body? And I was like, oh, I've never seen a treasure map on like a person. And then it went from there and I, that, that was it. And why did I do blind? Well, it's kind of a, it's a dual title, which is what I like about it, because she obviously has a huge blind spot. She doesn't remember any of her life, basically. And I think for Weller, she's an emotional blind spot for him. Like, as he, he's a guy that's used to thinking objectively about everything. And when it comes to Jane, he, he has trouble thinking objectively about her. Yeah. How much of, um, like, Jamie comes from a lot of action roles, mm -hmm. and how much of that, like, helped, like, just her walking into set and then having to function as this amazing fighter? Oh, yeah, no, I mean, you know, it, you couldn't have done it with somebody that had no fight experience before, like, and Jamie has an amazing stunt double, um, you know, Kai Furneaux, who's, like, just literally one of the best in the world, and um, uh, recognized game internationally. <laughs> uh, so she, uh, she's, she brings so much to the show, and, and um, we just take it really seriously, like, the you know, what's exhausting, I think, for Jamie and Sullivan is even though they're done filming some days, they have to go immediately into fight rehearsal because these fights are, like, incredibly complicated and hard to do on television shows, which is why most television shows don't have a giant fight sequence every episode. They're smart. They figured it out. It's a lot of work. So, um, but it's important to us, you know? And uh, um, so, yeah, no, that her, her being able to do action was incredibly important, yeah. It seems to be, like, almost either outside organization being the government itself that's above the team mm -hmm. that's kind of like wants her pretty much terminated is that something we'll be seeing the rest of the season oh of? yeah the character of carter who you meet at the end of episode three um is basically the big bad for the season and um uh he's very determined over the next 22 episodes to to get rid of jane you know like he sees jane as an enormous threat he doesn't believe that she doesn't remember who she is you know and uh and he's very nervous because her body has some information that is, to his mind, only three or four other people in the world knew about. And so that's that's terrifying to him. For So Daylight and Carter are, are big arcs this season. How much did you look into the science of actual memory loss, like procedural versus the... Like I, well, I had been obsessed with this drug that this is kind of based on, which is like a... It's, it's being designed for, you know, people that have traumatic experiences, which which will basically gently erase his memory. And so um, so if you're, like, let's say, you, you know, you're in the army and your car gets blown up and you see your friends die, it's literally this thing that you, sh you would administer immediately and it would, it would make it difficult for that memory to retain so you wouldn't be traumatized by it. And then it, there's another version where as you... Memory is really interesting in how it gets unpacked and packed. And so um, there's a lot of people working on things that, like, to erase trauma again to ease kind of like traumatic memories is to like kind of dilute them it's hard to talk about in like soundbite sort of ways but it, it's uh I, I you know i talk to a lot of uh neurologists and i mean like listen that's the kind of science fiction -y part about the show is the drug but it is based on some very real research that's going on how do you go about setting the revelations for the season how, how far in advance can you plot when we'll learn well, we know what you're going to, like, we know what 22 is right now, so it's like, and we've known what 22 is since, like, the second week of the show. So, so it's like, for me, as a storyteller, I need to know how it ends to figure out how to, how to write it. I need a point to go to. So for us, it's like, it's been, um, it's basically the story, the, the good news is the story is, like, very, very complicated, right? And so you have to start laying a foundation of information so that, because we're getting to here, and if I told you what here was right now, it would take like 40 minutes of backstory just to get there. <laughs> so it's like, what's fun about doing in the show, you can give it 
four or five minutes at a time. And so by the time you get to season two, season three, all of that groundwork has been laid and then you can like, bang, here's what's going on, you know? So, um, and on the way there, I mean, it's really important for me that shows don't feel like all middle, you know? Like, especially shows like this, where it's like, there's a central mystery at its core. I think, you know, I think what's fun is people were so surprised that we revealed the Taylor Shaw thing in like episode three. But for me, it's like, you, that's, that's the central mystery. <laughs> you can't, you can't just like, you can't give like dull little bits out and then like have one big revelation at the end of the season.